The arraignment of Deputy Commissioner of Police Miguel Segura in Belmopan Magistrates Court on Tuesday, following a deadly collision over the weekend, which claimed the life of 54-year-old Yolanda Valencia, is a step in the right direction, amid serious doubts that the matter would be glossed over by the Belize Police Department. Segura's indictment on a slew of traffic-related charges is ironic, since, as an officer in the upper echelon, he is sworn to uphold the law and is held to a higher esteem because of his rank. Notwithstanding his professional accomplishments as a decorated and well-respected officer, the public outcry for fairness is overwhelming. Everybody saying that he's a big man there, and we want justice here. We want just if they don't do justice, the people of Sokot will go to Benke to find him. We are very vexed. We will, we, we, we will do the justice. The events of the past few days, to some, may very well signal the end of Segura's career as a law enforcement officer, a sudden and steep fall from grace. Despite a massive campaign being launched back in April to address the issue of alcohol and road safety, Segura, whom we know was well aware of the initiative, proceeded with reckless abandon. His former boss, retired Commissioner of Police Crispin Jeffries, is leading that charge. The laws in place to deal with drunk driving are in three parts. The first part provides for the use of the breathalyzer. The second part provides for the sampling of the suspected person through either his blood, and the third part is through his urine. Those processes are what the police, as a part of the drunk driving campaign, will be doing as a secondary effort. The initial effort will be for all enforcement officers, being, being them from the city, the transport department or the police to deal with it together with a view to start with the testing randomly. Although random testing, for whatever reason, may not have been applied to the brass of the police department prior to the fatal outcome on Saturday morning, Assistant Commissioner of Police Aaron Guzman says that they are meeting the necessary requirements to see the process through. Mr. Segura was taught, taken to the polyclinic and we did not get urine, we got blood because they, they, you can get request urine or blood. Blood was given, blood was taken to the lab to be, to be done. Right? So it's a process and we are continuing the process. The transport department, on the other hand, is now forced to be more inclusive in its approach to addressing the perennial issue of road safety. Among the many questions that are yet to be asked is whether Yolanda Valencia was wearing a seatbelt at the time of the accident. Chief Transport Officer Crispin Jeffries was in the media just two days before the crash commenting on the matter. It has provided opportunity for enforcement officers from the police, the transport department and the municipalities to be trained on traffic related matters. The other areas of success is the ongoing roadworks on the Western Highway, the introduction of highway patrols and the, there is efforts being made to look at the legislative framework. We are looking at seatbelt legislation at this time. In 1996, on the 4th of May, a piece of legislation was passed in Belize concerning the use of seat belts in the front seat of vehicles. A lot of Belizeans are not aware that such a piece of legislation exists. We saw it fit to, after repeatedly looking at the studies that have been done, to in, increase the numbers of persons in the vehicle that should be wear, wearing seat belts. And that is because we think that the statistics is showing, the crash test is showing, the data is showing that persons sitting in the back seat, children in the back seat, sometimes fly through the windshield or when the vehicle turns over, they fly through the windows. And sometimes when the, the accident is a small one, persons not buckled up in the back seat hit those in the front seat in the back of the head and it caused some severe injuries. So we are looking at seat belts as an issue right now with the legislative change. While a change in legislation is actively being sought, the fate of Deputy Compol Segura hangs in the balance. He has been placed on interdiction and is scheduled to return to court on October 9th after being granted bail of $6,000. The terms of his freedom, however, come with strict conditions, which include reporting to the Benke police station every Friday, appearing at every court date, not interfering with the witness, and not being charged for any offense while on bail. Reporting for News 5, I am Isani Kayetano.